So like I my favorite thing right now is to download old sounds from 90s shows and put them into my videos in ways that like people don't necessarily notice. How so? Like what type of sound? So like if someone would normally like either pop a graphic on the screen or if you have a transition, they would normally just use like a or a but I use like a Powerpuff Girls motion sound instead. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. It's fun. Happy Pride, Connor. Thanks. Are you having a good Pride Month? No. No. Really? <laughs> no, I'm having a great Pride Month. <laughs> Does Pride Month get like overwhelming? Like, is it like, I'm not comparing it to like, you know, when like Halloween comes up, you're like, oh my God, I'm not, I don't have. <laughs> so you think all gay people are wearing costumes? No, no, not at all. But like, does it sneak up on you? I mean, like, you got to make like. Sneak? So you think we're all criminals? <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Oh boy. I am a total ally. Completely. <laughs> That's what they all say. Sis, ma'am. Please. Now, um, now I'm going like immediately red already, <laughs> and we're already this. Cis man sounds like the worst superhero ever. Hey, I am cis man here to straighten the day. They all think they're superheroes. Let's be real. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Connor Franta. Hi, Ooh, Connor. We've been wanting to have you on this podcast for a while, but you were like, not yet. Not yet, because you've been working on something very, very exciting. I just figured it'd be premature before I released my book that I'm like, I might as well like come on when I have something to say. That's Russell Simmons uh, said that. I never put uh, an artist on a late night talk show unless they, their album's already out. Yeah. Because you don't want to put, you don't want to have something to talk about when it's not available yet. So truly, yeah. You, well, and this one isn't available out now. You to pre order and then it comes out in September. My mind immediately thought this podcast. I was like, you have to pre order the podcast? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking it's about, behind a paywall. about his album, his book. The Colon. book. Yes, the book's out in three months. You can pre order it today. ConorFrantabooks.com. House Fires. House Fires. Wow. What it's it's a, it's photographs of house fires and me smiling in front of them. That's it. <laughs> you just like recreated the meme, the meme. Like the meme girl who just sold it as like an NFT. She did for 500k. Did she? Yes. The little baby? Yep. She well she's now she's now like 20 she's in college. Yes. Yeah. But I think she used the money though to pay off her college and to do some other good with it. I heard she donated a lot of it too. Yeah, yeah. To pay for the house that burned down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that that actually really sweet. What a full circle or she's moment. Or just funding Connor's book. She sold it as an NFT. It's me. I'm the girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here today. And so this is now going to be your third book. Mm -hmm. You've had a note to self, which you brought a copy of today. Yeah, just in case you wanted to see see like, something in person. I've seen it like at every time I walk into an Urban Outfitters. Yeah, or it's in a I'm, lot of those. You're in Urban Outfitters? Yeah, a lot of different wow. places. It's really it's gone further than I thought it would. Like it still gets bought. It's been released for five years and it gets bought up a ton today. It sells out a lot. I would see this everywhere and I would always be like, "That's Connor Franta. He's that big YouTuber." And then we finally met and became friends, and I'm like. That's Connor Franta. He wrote that book that I see <laughs> everywhere that I have not read, nor have I bought. But now I'm we a proud owner of, of and will always be here on this set. It's no, it's no Hemingway, but <laughs> it is beautiful. Have you leafed through it? It's beautiful. Oh, yes. Many times. And it's so well designed. Thanks. This is all you get. You just get yeah, <laughs> just weird, that weird, strange Order wallpaper. Order from ConorFrantaBooks.com. ConorFrantaBooks.com. There we go. ConorFrantaBooks.com. I, I thought you just made up that website. Oh, no. I did my research. I'm like, let's get it right. But no, that's where it is. It's from. So, note to self, and then the one before that was a work in progress. Yeah. And this one's House Fires. Yeah. The name House Fires, yeah. Connor. Where, 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 what's so the... I had the words um, house and the words fires in my notes for years uh, because I kind of like the, the contrast between the two, almost the duality. Like a home is really comforting. Uh, fire is really destructive. And I kept trying to play with different words like pl literally playing with fire was a potential title and a bunch of other different ones but i just didn't quite like it as much and then i realized that every everything i was writing about was essentially a house fire like we go through these destructive moments where something we hold really precious to us gets kind of burned down and then you have to move to the next thing and you build it back up kind of gets burned down you move to the next and i just thought it was the perfect metaphor for everything that i had written about accidentally and now that you're kind of yeah going through this whole new stage in your life as you know you're approaching 30 and whatnot mm -hmm. like you've already kind of built this house of comfort throughout your 20s and then now it's a whole new level someone read the amazon description did i kind of get it? Was that, <laughs> that was pretty close bit? i mean that's how i'm kind of seeing it though yeah. and knowing you and knowing because we're only a few months apart i'm yeah like three months older than you what's your sign um, I'm a cancer. You're a cancer, but you're you're September. You of, are pretty cancerous. 
You think so? No. I, that I was always no the idea. worst sign to have growing up when you like started learning about astrology. Yeah. Everyone's like, I'm a Taurus. I'm a Virgo. I'm a Gemini. And I'm like, I'm a Cancer. Yeah, no one like, ever like gets terminal gemini no well no. even like the virgo sign is not as cute as the other ones like it's isn't it what is, what is, is that what yours is virgo mine's virgo and i'm trying to remember even what it is but i just know i don't like the 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 signs the symbols and the way they oh, look it's None always of like it, a yeah. top, it's always like a top comment on like tiktok and it's like this is so virgo energy yeah like what does that mean we're very organized and emotional that's what i is, saw the which, tiktok i saw was like a beach hack of like how to set up your beach and make it sand free and making like a <laughs> dipping pool before you walk into this like tarp area with the towels. And that's the top comment was Virgo. Oh energy. no, yeah, it's so me. That's like if you leave the beach and you have any sand on your feet and you put on your shoes, it's it'll it'll kill me inside. No, that's the con of like living near the beach. You think it's yeah. nice. I like looking at it, but I don't like yeah. carrying it. Because sand me. just if you wear a pair of sneakers on the beach. That's it. Those sneakers are done for. Oh, yeah. For oh, sure. Yeah. It's, you got to buy a new pair. Without a doubt. Yeah. Oh, and when Sans getting your sheets and stuff, too. Oh, my just, gosh. You can't get rid of it. That's why you got to just go somewhere else to go to the beach, like, you know, at a hotel or like an Airbnb or something. <laughs> go to a beach house and then shower it all off. Yes. yes. Leave, yes, yes. leave your suitcase there and just come back home and buy new clothes yeah. and pick up a copy of Note to Self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in LA, sure. the beaches are like... 400 yards away or oh. just to get to the water you have to yeah. walk quite a bit it's a journey yeah it's, so it's exhausting hot. yeah uh. <laughs> we, we sound like old jewish men i know just i was about... like old privileged jewish <laughs> men i never go to the beach though it's so far away it's like a good 45 minute drive and it's just it's it's a little bit too much but anyways yeah. anyway so wait uh, backpedaling to um the book because I remember you have been working on it, and you went off um, into the woods, into the wilderness to really finish it and wrap it up. Quite Where did you times. go to write it? Uh, I mean, I've written it kind of so like at the uh, over a year, like a year and a half ago, I went to France just to write it. Paris, I went there like by myself for two weeks, and then what, the one you're referencing was like at the beginning or wait, yeah, at the end of last year, I drove to San Francisco and then to like Portland and just kind of like stopped at Airbnbs along the way and wrote in the woods and by the sea <laughs> are you carrying a typewriter with you a little just notebook and then you move to text, a little mustache or, uh, <laughs> like voice noting ideas you're going to transcribe later i do that all day actually on every run i get back from i have like a list of ideas in my mind and i get back and try and write them out really quickly but because I, I don't like to carry a watch a phone anything so it's just like the whole run i'm meditating on the same ideas and i get back and see if i can remember them um, but for that, no, I just, just my laptop. I just type it out in, in Word. Yeah. You don't get to have that like satisfying though crunch of like tearing the paper and throwing no. it to the wastebasket being like, damn it. Not no. good. Not good not enough. Good. Mm. Um, but it did, since this is your third book, did you feel like this one was easier? Did it spill out of you, um, yeah. better than the other ones? Yeah. It's like a muscle. I mean, I feel like the more I've, I've exercised it, the better I get at it. Uh, so even just the process of, it's such a daunting process to create a book in any capacity. It's so long mm -hmm. compared to everything that we're used to creating i guess in modern times it feels really archaic but yeah no it, it since they're all you know from myself they're all about me about my thoughts uh and you know poetry thoughts whatever it may be it just yeah it spills out it's a little bit easier than writing something fictional <laughs> and that's what i love about you and your writing process and creating a book as a creator is like i believe you that you put in the time to actually write it and put it out a lot of books that a lot of creators put out are like written by these ghost writers and stuff yeah. and you're just like yeah. oh sure or they're did they write that mm -hmm. or they're written sloppily and they're just trying to fill the page yeah to like get their get their check and leave but no i no did you, spent you three years on this right <laughs> yeah years years and years yeah the first that like some of the poems in there are from right after the uh the second book so i didn't even know i was writing a third book i just was writing to write so some of the things in there have like made its way from three four years ago and note to self is more of a memoir first one's more of a memoir and then note to self is more mm. of a kind of like a it's a pouring of my mind it's like okay. a collection of it's similar to this one and it's a collection of short stories poetry photography that's right yeah there's no real like plot line to it it's more just a collection of essays okay essentially cool yeah <laughs> will the cover uh be revealed though the day it actually comes out and no, shows up at people's doorsteps probably or? in like a few weeks yeah yeah it's one of those things where i just i was like oh let's just space it out do you do don't give everyone everything all the time you know <laughs> do you have to do an audiobook as well yeah that's it's it's fun but it's also torturous because you have to read 
what you've written out loud slowly and articulately in front of a stranger <laughs> in a booth so you hear every sound you're making and again the person's like can you try that line again i was like oh the one about me saying i'm depressed <laughs> <laughs> great yeah thanks it, brian and uh how long does that take it's long i mean they they want to crank it out as quick as possible um so you usually do it like in three days or so but it's like three eight hour days straight wow uh, because again, it's like pickups. You're doing it again and again, and sometimes he'll be like, hey, "Can you do that again?" It felt emotional. It felt like you weren't giving me emotion. It's like voice acting, right? Yeah, it's like voice acting. It's it's crazy that a lot of like big actors now like will do um, they redo the audio books for a lot of huge classics. Like you can listen to Elijah Wood do um, Huckleberry Finn yeah. or uh, Jake Gyllenhaal doing The Great Gatsby. Yeah, that's gotta be like a good gig to book though. Oh, like, be amazing. If you're an actor, you know, you're just scripts right there. You just get to read The Great Gatsby. I'd love to do that or do voice acting someday what, what so book fun. would you love to like dream read out loud for an audiobook oh god i'm so bad with questions like this i feel like you would have a way because you're w- far more well read than i am i'm oh, trying to think I of like a great I feel like matt would like a good donna tart book yeah, to read yeah, out yeah. oh yeah the secret history or i would just like to do like a, a clifford book or something like that <laughs> well, just that's give, why me, I'm like, give me one from arthur like <laughs> yeah i'm like what would be a fun one it probably would be a children's book of some kind yeah the hungry caterpillar <laughs> everybody poops everybody poops. everybody poops that would be a good one to read yeah I, I try to wonder who would i want to uh read everybody poops maybe like adam driver like uh everybody poops you poop <laughs> something everybody does your mom poops your dad poops okay <laughs> moving on from books and poop and, twilight uh, is my answer i'll read oh, twilight. twilight just the first one or the whole it's not even a trilogy it's a <laughs> I read Twilight just because all the girls were reading Twilight at my school, and I wanted to like talk Same. with them about it. And then halfway through New Moon, I gave up. Even the movies where I'm like, it's not that they're good, but they're enjoyable to watch because they're so cringy at points. <laughs> Same with the books. You're, you're reading that. I read them all. You're reading them, and you're like, this is ridiculous, but you just can't stop. And didn't it start out as a – was it a Harry Potter fan fiction? Yes. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. You're yeah. Right. It started out as a Harry Potter fan fiction. And then Twilight like, was Harry Potter fan fiction. I believe so. I believe so. In the like first few like pages of Twilight, mm-hmm. when you open it up, it says like mm. that this was an adapted thing of another project that was put out on a Whoa. fan fiction site. Yeah, that's kind of wild. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's take it back, Connor. Let's take it back to where you're from. Let's get to know you. I mean, we already know each other, but um, you come from Minnesota. Minnesota. You're born in Wisconsin. Yes. Like the St. Paul area. I was born in Wisconsin, but I grew up like two hours south of uh, the St. Paul area, right on kind of like the corner of Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Iowa. Okay. So like the really far. Yeah. I could get into Wisconsin in a few minutes. I can get into Iowa in a few minutes. Is that the place where you can stand in like four states at once if you go to that corner? No, that's the New Mexico, um, Colorado, Colorado, Denver. Nevada. No, not that's Nevada. It's Denver. Like four. <laughs> it's like four four states intersecting at, at one. Right. Okay. So yeah, it's yeah. not what you're talking that's about. That's a what is it? Walk to Remember. They do that in that movie. I think so. I think it's a walk to remember. I haven't seen a walk to remember in a long time. I just remember he builds the telescope and she dies. Oh, <laughs> sorry, guys, didn't mean to spoil a walk to remember. Came out in 2004. I think it's okay to, <laughs> at this point, if they haven't seen it. Are you proud of growing up in Minnesota? Do you enjoy oh, it? Love... Do you have like any like oh I Minnesota wish I grew... pride? Yeah. I love Minnesota. I think it's one of the best states there there is. And... My Minnesota pride. It's everyone's so nice there. The accents are unbeatable. Very heavy O's, and I feel like the older you get, uh, the heavier your accent gets there. So, like, my dad's a doctor, and I, I'm all the time, like, seeing his elderly patients, and they just have the strongest, thickest accents, and they're so nice and so wholesome. It's the best. What is it? Like, oh, yeah, you betcha. Oh, my gosh, there. We're in Minnesota over there. Oh, for wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's real super. Well, you're thinking, yeah. you're thinking, I'm, I'm making, yeah, just you're a doing Fargo North Dakota. accent. So, Which but, kind of, it's kind of the same. Because they're, yeah. they're very close, right? North right Dakota. Right the border, and, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they kind of get like a little bit oh, more. Oh, don't you know? You betcha. Oh, you betcha. Oh, you're darn tooting. Oh, the cows in the pasture. I don't know. <laughs> that's talking about good. milk and cows. Are you going to turn into that when you get older, you think? Or are you going to just pick it back up? I don't think so, unless I move back there, but... Did you used to have imagine. the Minnesota accent and then lost it, or you just never really picked I, it up? I don't think I ever had it, but I definitely have sayings I'll fall into. Like, I love the word oofta. So I'll go, when I go back home, do you not know oofta? No, no, I don't know oofta. So, like, you know when people say oof? 
Ufta oh. is the minister. Uh, oof and Ufta. It's just like a badum fucked. It, it's well, like a could, oof. It means everything. It's universal. It's it's a it's but a love it, language. It's an expression of exhaustion. It's okay. Anything. Ufta. 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 Like, like so, the- I'll come home from like a really hot run, and my mom would just be like, "How was it?" I'd be like, Ufta. <laughs> or, <laughs> and she knows <laughs> how 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 rough of a run it was. Yeah. Ufta. Like, but she'll or like I'll eat something really good, and I'll be like, Ufta. <laughs> And your dad is a physicist? <laughs> no. That, uh, <laughs> I was telling that. Uh, <laughs> I was like, we just, I read, the, like, read the Wikipedia and just get everything wrong. No, he's a physician, not a physicist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. And you did uh, high diving also, right? No, I did swimming. Swimming. Oh, just competitive no, swimming. I'm just getting it all wrong. Yeah, yeah. But you know, so your dad's a doctor. Javelin? Was it javelin that you did? <laughs> Water polo. Do you do jousting in oh high school? Oh, my God. I would, oh, my God. Water polo? I'd get my ass beat. Why? It's so I can't do anything that's aggressive or competitive. So. But you're a runner. I feel like you have enough stamina to when keep your like you legs punch going. Punch someone and running water polo. You're like oh yeah, you're like, throwing it, it elbows and drowning each other. Can you splash people in water polo? Probably. Or is that like a foul? I don't, I don't know. know. If you like intentionally splashing someone, you I, can hug people in wrestling. So I guess why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but dad's a doctor. Um, yeah. Which I like. Obviously, one of the most noble professions in like the world is to be a doctor. But it's kind of nice though. Like, do you or does it ever make you like kind of a bit of a hypochondriac, or does it give you like a peace of mind if you're ever like, Dad, I feel weird. What's had, wrong with me? I had the opposite effect. Yeah, so I'm not a hypochondriac. I'm too. I was so like when I dislocated my shoulder one time. I was like, we don't need to go to the hospital. We can figure this out. Do Dad's we... saying this. No, or, I'm oh, saying th- oh. I'm saying this to a group of like <laughs> drunk twenty five year olds. I'm like, we can figure this out, and we did. And I didn't go to the hospital. Did we... you pop it back in place? I or... popped it back in place myself. Damn, it hurt really, really bad. But we didn't have to go to the hospital. Was Pops proud of you for that? He didn't seem to care either way. He was like, oh no, you put... it's in. Okay, like okay. it's you know, cool. He's, I think because he's affected, he's he sees crazy shit all the time. He's not affected by anything. Gotcha. I could I could have my arm amputated and he'd be like, we'll figure it out. Like, I, he's just, uh, like, he's just, we'll just, be right back to the conversation with Connor in just a second. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. Are you still going to the post office? Are you still paying full price for postage? Well, thanks to stamps.com, you don't have to anymore. Mail and ship anytime, anywhere, straight from your own computer. You can send letters, ship packages, and pay less, a lot less. And they have discounted rates from UPS, USPS, and many more. Stamps.com saves businesses thousands of hours and tons of money every year. So Stamps.com brings all the services of UPS, USPS straight to your computer, which is a must-have for any business. So whether you have a little Etsy shop, a little Depop shop, this is a great way to get really cheap postal for any business you may be running we use stamps.com all the time whether we're mailing out merch or mailing out stuff for other business transactions that we have to do we we love stamps.com here at Hoon and a half and we use it all the time and it sounds like magic you can just use your computer to print any u.s postage anytime 24 7 for any letter packages or what have you that you're sending out any class of mail stamps.com has it covered and once your mail is ready, just schedule a pickup or drop off and you're on your way. It's that simple. With stamps.com, you get discounts of up to 40% on US postage and up to 66% off UPS rates. Stamps.com is a no brainer. Save time and save money. It's no wonder that nearly 1 million small businesses use stamps.com. So, so stop wasting time going to the post office and go to stamps.com. And there's no risk. And when you use my promo code HOOT, H O O T, you get a free four week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. And there's no long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the homepage and use promo code HOOT, H-O-O-T. That's stamps.com, promo code HOOT. Stamps.com, never go to the post office again. And now back to the episode. (laughs) But so yeah, and then you were a swimmer as well. Yep, swimmer as well. Competitive swimmer. Yep, been national, swimming since you were a kid. National competitor. You won the YMCA uh, meet when you were younger. The one, <laughs> just the one, just the one meet. No, yeah, I won. I won state, um, and then I competed in nationals as well. Wow. Yeah. And how'd you do at nationals? Not as good. Probably, like, I think it was like twentieth, maybe. Yeah. Or something. 
That's not that bad. I don't was, know. Is, yeah. Do you still have it? The state? Yeah, the state one. I don't think you get anything for it. No, no. Like the ability to just like <laughs> beat, some, beat a regular person in a race. Like I, I think I probably could, yeah. But that's also, I got my, that's how I dislocated my shoulder. Oh, I was like, swimming. I was like, try, I was like, uh, what's the word i was like showing off being like <laughs> i can swim really fast and then my i was in one of those wave pools and the wave hit me wrong and then my shoulders popped out so Ooh. Mm, it hurt really bad but it may be i think my shoulders are kind of fucked in general swimming so. seems like as gentle as it is it, as like a sport it seemed very brutal because you have to wake up before i don't know why they make you swim so early in the morning but i remember swim team you have to be at the place at like 4 45 a.m the water is freezing cold you have to dive right in and it's just relentless like it's and for as you know like wrestling people i feel like they had better schedules than than swimming and wrestling is obviously very physical yeah w why do you think that is i it was it was relentless like i used to swim three to four mornings a week for an hour before school, like you said, and we'd get up at 4.45, drive in Minnesota, so in the freezing winter, <gasps> it'd be like negative 30 some mornings, and then you'd have to get in the pool indoors, but at the same time, you still don't forget that cold. Then I'd have to go to class and do everything, and then I would get out of class and have to go back to the pool for two hours, and then I have to come home and do my homework, and then I have to wake up and do it again. And it was it was grueling. And yet no one was forcing me to do that. Why I did that, I don't really know. <laughs> Like, why, why? Why would I put myself through that? Yeah, you didn't even jump in the pool <laughs> yeah. on Saturday at the pool party. No. I don't want to. I don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you anti-swimming now? Are you, like, anti-pool? I'm like, anti-swimming. <laughs> <laughs> You're an anti-swimmite? <laughs> yeah. I'm fully, like, hey, that was a good one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, for the record, no. Um, uh, no, I just think I, I was out of it. Like, after nine or after 12 years of doing it, I just... I was like, done. Uh, I'm done with this. Yeah, I did it in college too, and I was running in college too, and I was just like, I'm done with this. You still own your speedos? I think I do have some, to be honest. Do you want to sell them? Yeah, let's raise, let's raise money for charity. Yeah, to us, go. are you in the market for a speedo? No, it, no, it no. Just say speedo. you want it. Just say you want it. Can you give it to me? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. I've never worn a speedo. Me neither. I feel like we should get some speedos. They're I, very revealing. I, we, I know it's kind of fun though. I think I got a nice. Package. A nice trim. You heard it. <laughs> a nice trim. <laughs> but wait, why did you never get into diving, though? I think diving's scary. I, there's something about it that I just don't think I'd be good at. I don't know if yeah. it's like the equilibrium of spinning in the air. I, something about it just doesn't feel right for me. So how do they recruit for diving? Like, do they... I don't think anyone where's knows... the transition? Like, I feel like none of them have any idea what they're doing, and they just hope they're going to be good at it. How could you possibly know you're good at that? Yeah, you just... I think you got to just go to the local pool and see who's the biggest daredevil and, and recruit them. And you went to a Catholic school, right? I did, yeah. Now, so you were swimming for a Catholic school? No, I went to a Catholic school from... It was like kindergarten through eighth grade. It was tiny. 60, 60 kids, K through eight total. Which okay. meant I my eighth grade class had five kids in it. What? We were we the school was underneath a church. That doesn't sound like a school. That sounds like someone just babysitting illegal. like five kids. That's like my middle school too. The whole the whole eighth grade class was like nine kids. It's it's both great and in hindsight, weird. Yeah. Because you don't have like the normal experience of like But it makes you figure out how to deal with people. Because if you're in a class with eight kids, you have to get along with eight people. True, true. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, and everyone, everyone for the most part, got along. And but usually the teachers are like less than qualified because it's a private. <laughs> you said it, not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had like teachers throw like stuff at me and like scream at us and like oh, you yeah. know lose... throw stuff at you. Yeah, I used oh. to get stuff thrown at me all the time. What stuff? Because I just would call out in class. I'm like you just because you're just like you're just a crazy person. Uh -huh. And like so you just call out and just you know don't raise your hand or talk to your friend and erasers and markers and they just get frustrated because they're they they just hire anybody. Yeah. Yeah, you're right though. Yeah, we had a few teachers leave like in tears, like leave class and we're uh, but like no reason to really leave. I just think that they were frustrated with life and they would just randomly leave. Which just shouldn't but happen. It was it? It wasn't your fault for making the teacher cry. Oh, it was my fault for sure. <laughs> Without a I doubt. made a teacher cry one time. Did you? Yes, Miss. Oh, I made Miss Brown cry, and I'm really sorry, Miss Brown. I made oh, you cry. No. Three years before teaching us, I think she had a, a marriage that didn't work out. She didn't oh. even get married. She was engaged, and they called off the engagement. Yeah. But she still had a lot of emotional baggage. Oh no! And she would just spill and tell us and would take in up what like grade 20, were you in for the sixth grade oh. english yeah wrong demographic to this be was spilling also... your marriage troubles too and i was just a little <laughs> smart aleck kid and i like made a comment where i'm like okay can we like 
get to work and then she you're gonna be alone forever she started crying and made me go outside and then came outside in tears and was like why do you hate me oh why do you hate my me? god that was the exact same type of thing happened for us too i think it's just a breaking point point. and honestly again i'm like Teachers deserve the world, so we were, was, we were probably being little shits The to crying them. in front of your students is so weird. I know, but think about how every, Sixth every day... Sixth graders are brutal and evil. Yeah. Like, yeah. They probably would make me cry for sure. They're essentially performing for, like, three quarters of the year. Uh. You're up there, like... You're up there, like... <laughs> da, like da, kids da, are da, just, da, da, that's da, like da. that John Mulaney bit that he has where he's like, someone got married at a wedding, and when they revealed the bride some like sixth grade kid just goes oh she's ugly oh my <laughs> oh Steve. no i mean i don't know it's oh. just a john mulaney joke yeah, but yeah. like you know a sixth grader would has say no filter like and they that. could just say something like that they're so brutal yeah if you're spilling your my you know my engagement got called off and yeah like that actually happened to me i ju- this is just a memory that flashed in my head we had an english teacher in high school who she was engaged and the engagement got called off and she told us about it, and she was very, like, reserved, and, you know, she said, hey, you know, this happens in life, very mature about it, and we were like, oh, we're so sorry, we're, you know, we're here for you, and we were in high school, so a little bit more, whatever, and then, like, a week later, some kid that graduated, like, five years earlier was just coming to visit, and popped in and goes, oh, my God, are you still with whatever his name, and she goes, it ended last week, and then she just start yeah. crying oh, so shame. being a teacher is definitely tough and yeah. props to every teacher that is out there especially with the last year that just happened oh but. yeah well yeah because i'm like at any other job you just get in your you could just get in your cubicle if you're in a cubicle whatever behind your laptop and then you just like do your work they're in front again performing they're in mm-hmm. front of a class mm. they're teaching they're disciplining they, are, they yes. have to be people aware who don't want to learn for the they're most being part looked at by yeah. a, like dozens of eyes the entire time so if they are in an emotional state they're toast. So utmost respect to teachers. Yes. Shout out to the teachers. Shout out to the Are teachers. you guys? So Mike, I got a lot of travel planned up this summer. Get to go home, see my family. I'm gonna be on the airplanes traveling, and a must-have for me is having my tunes and good earbuds to go along with it. And that's whether it's for work or play. I highly recommend you take your Raycon earbuds with you. Whether you're going for a run, whether you want to meditate, whether you're exercising, or whether you just want to listen to some good music, a pair of Raycon wireless headphones make all the difference. You get crisp, powerful beats at half the price of premium audio brands. Raycons look great and feel even better. They come in a range of cool colors, and with the included customizable gel tips, you can get a comfortable in-ear fit. And Raycons are built to go wherever you go, with quick, seamless Bluetooth pairing and a compact charging case as well. My favorite thing about Raycon is the 24-hour battery life. I've been using them every single day when I work out, and they have yet to fail me. They are super light, compact, and I love the color. And listen up, all the listeners and watchers and viewers of this podcast. We are hooking you up with a really great, sweet deal with Raycon. They're offering you guys 15% off on their products when you go to buyraycon.com slash hoot. Once again, for 15% off, go to buyraycon.com slash hoot. There, you'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. They're such a great deal. You'll want to grab a pair and a spare. Once again, if you want 15% off your order, go to buyraycon.com slash hoot. Buyraycon.com slash hoot for 15% off. And now, Back to the episode. Are Teachers. you guys the one? Is he? Did you guys all go to like Zurich together? Was that on the same trip? We went to Switzerland. Yeah, it was like fr- France. In France. Well, we but landed we like in the... Switzerland. Yes. We went to Chamonix, Courchevel in mm-hmm. um, France to go skiing. You want to yeah. share about that trip? I, I, love, I remember that I was love, a great. I love Matt and Mai's like story of friendship because prior to that, I don't, I didn't really know much about Matt. Like I, I recognize Matt, but it was like, oh, my, our friends Will and Arden were like, Matt's gonna come on the trip, and I was like, oh, cool, another, another person. I'm like new to the group, so it'd be like fun to have another newbie in the group. Matt and I met, and we were like sleeping on two different couches in Will's apartment, and then we like then the next day went to France for a whole week together. And the whole time, I'm like, I know nothing about Matt. He could be gay, and we could fall in love right now. <laughs> I'm like, I know nothing. This could happen. You were an optimist. Yeah. And then after like two minutes, I'm like, no, he's straight. <laughs> God. No, because I was there. I was there like on a um, an oh, emotional yeah. getting over a breakup trip. I gotcha. was there just like venting and I needed advice on all this stuff. And he was coaching me through it the entire time. Mm. Oh, I'll never forget that. Yeah. Yeah. When we were, um, we finally got to the, the chalet. Yeah. And we were having like many, many glasses of wine. And I yep. was just opening up to you and you were just like. 
you're never going to want to be back with that person ever again. Yeah. Trust me, buddy. You'll get over it. Yeah. I did. was like in the po- I was like a year or two ahead of you in that phase. So I, I was like, I know exactly what you're going through. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Yeah. I was like, I know you're not going to listen to me, but I'm going to tell you. But it was a great bonding experience we had that entire yeah. time. We went skiing. We uh, we were on many, many road trips up windy, windy streets all um, through uh France. So you know Will Darbyshire and Arden Rose. Yes, yeah, so that's like, that was like our mutual because Will invited me out there. Gotcha. Arden. Yeah, we were always like the early risers too. I feel like we were both. I was making coffee for everyone in the morning, and then you'd be the first to come down and read your book. Usually, we were reading oh yes. A book. Yeah. What book was I reading the trip? Oh, I was reading um. You were, I was reading Hemingway. Was the Sun Also reading. Rises was the book mm. I was reading. It was a good book. And I was like, who is this clown reading Hemingway? <laughs> who is this guy? Who is this really setting up? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm reading this? I, it's Hemingway. <laughs> I thought it was all for the joke because I knew you were like a viner at the time. So I'm like, is, I was like, is he just pulling my leg? Is this whole thing him oh, just... no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. No, I very quickly realized no. Yeah. And then I was at like had one of the worst days of my life on that trip. <laughs> I know. And I always think about it. And as it grows in my memory, I feel so bad because I... I w- do you want me to tell or do you want to tell? No, I would love to hear your version of it. Please, please. <laughs> Give us every I feel detail. It was at the time. Okay, so it was a group of, what would you say, like eight to ten people? Eight. Yeah, about yeah, eight. Eight of us. It was about eight of us, and we were skiing um, in, again, the French Alps. Like, it was beautiful. We None of us had really been, so we were skiing. We were hiking. We were doing all this stuff. A lot of snow. What, the first day we were there, we went up. And it was towards the middle to the end of the day. So we didn't have enough time to rent skis and do all that. So we just decided, like, let's just kind of wander around and see what happens. Not knowing the area, not knowing anything. So we just started, like, wandering down a path and throwing snowballs at each other and being all cute and fun. And then after, like... A, just like a little bit we just were having so much fun and then matt goes guys i didn't bring the right shoes the right pants the right jacket nothing matt were the worst boots i brought a really good pair of boots but i thought we were just going on a little stroll yeah. down the road and coming back i didn't know we were going on a treacherous snow path journey down to this frozen lake and so i'm wearing these like american eagle boots where there is no traction at all there was it's just it was just total just rubber flat bottom so you're just so, shoe. so we're all slipping. so we're all like in our like snow suits just like running and prancing and screaming like everyone's having a great time and then poor matt is truly the only one who wasn't prepared so we were all just kind of ignoring the fact that he was in i know but really i was bad. at first it's i was really kind of like bad. go ahead but i was like still don't leave me because i was worried i was going to sprain my ankle at any really, moment oh, and yeah. then the path that we were going down got way too long <laughs> so we go let's just get down and butt slide through all of these trees we were, which was kind of fun but i kept getting soaked like soaked oh wasn't all, like waterproof well, stuff matt well, everyone else was wearing waterproof stuff and matt was wearing like jeans oh yeah. so again matt was just very underprepared but also rightfully so because we didn't even know we were doing this so we all just like kept like going on our little dopamine highs running down like arden was sliding on her belly like a seal through the (laughs) through the trees like something out of a disney movie and i remember right when i finally got down there (laughs) we're there and then like adrian or will and like arden are taking like pictures of you you look great you're just like having the best like photo op moment and i'm just like soaked and sweaty and like i had my glasses on i couldn't even see they're like they fogging, were, like, up. fogging up like, oh guys can we please just go back and, and then, no, you didn't. so was- then we were like let's go back but we can't go back the way we came it's the- impossible it's very very steep so then we're like well i guess we'll just keep following this path and we'll, we'll figure it out Little did we know it was like one hour before sundown. So we're going down this path and it starts getting narrower and narrower. And it's even like difficult for people with boots on. And then we get to a part that says avalanche (gasps) crossing. And there was a literally like a fresh avalanche that we were going to cross over to get to the other path. But we were so far into this hike, we could not turn around because it was getting dark. Yeah. So Matt is in hysterics. Matt is freaking the fuck out. Matt is saying, call in the helicopters. Save us. Call I in the was helicopters. Convinced I was going to have to be like careful. Air lifted out. out. Yes. Matt was on his knees crawling. Yeah. He was crawling. And I felt, and I cringe about it and it was embarrassing. I was hysterical and normally I'm not Does that. Does anyone have footage of this? Um, yes. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> have I, I watched it so. back? No. But Definitely. did we like take some sneaky video? It, it, again, we were little shits because we were having such a good time and in was he, were you crying? 
Oh yeah. Oh, not like I didn't not see mid, that. No, I wasn't don't like Don't make it sound like don't be a victim. <laughs> no, I was I was wi- I, you could say I was whimpering and I was like kind of hysterical. I was just really mad at the world and the situation that I was in. I mean, you didn't just you didn't like that I, switch I came to you this, get. Uh, yeah, I came on this trip to like have a good time and find clarity and I was just mad at myself I didn't have the right I didn't put on the right pair of boots yeah. and I didn't realize that we were going on this expedition and I was worried the sun was setting. But you know so we had to go switch? Where you could just like be like, you know what? I'm wet. I'm cold. I'm just gonna embrace it, and I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this, even though I'm wet and cold. But we're in the miserable. middle of France, like it's yeah, just yeah, that's. But like, it, we were also like we were on this hike for hours, so I think oh, it was, was like kind a of day? nobody was around us. Like we we were in a territory we shouldn't have been walking. Oh, no, boy. it was probably illegal at some points. And again, we were all just the rest of us are truly like I might as well have been like high as a kite because i was just like (laughs) sprinting through the woods me again like this is me after my like major depressive episode that matt is going through at this moment (laughs) and i'm thinking like i'm free you're peaking i am at my loo but it's a good bonding experience then for the two of you oh yes it's 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 a great memory then i got worried like they're never gonna invite me on another trip at all oh Oh, no you were like but no but no no it it started like sitting at settling and after like we got back then i was like oh we were all like not paying proper attention to Matt during that, but but you didn't need to pay attention. Yeah, like, luckily, suck it up and Will, get get with the program. Yeah. Will and Sophie Rubs were dirt taking on shifts, like on coming back and checking on me because I was just on my hands and knees scooting my body. Your hands and knees? I yes, because I couldn't walk because I would slip and I didn't want to sprain my ankle. It's a little. I mean, like it's a little dramatic, but. <laughs> But it, but it's true. Yo, uh, I would have been with you guys laughing and gallivanting in the front and just come on. It was less of like ignoring Matt. It was more of just like I see nothing but the wilderness ahead of me yeah. and I was sprinting into we it. We had just met. You didn't I was I wasn't your responsibility of like you need you didn't need to put that much um wow. emotional energy. But I feel bad care. about it. So that's what we and then we went back and we got to, we got drunk and people made pasta every night and oh, it was amazing. it was great. You know, Mike, sometimes it rains on your birthday. Sometimes the line for the coffee shop wraps around the building and sometimes Sometimes gas will go up another 10 cents. Sometimes it feels like life stinks. The good news is you don't have to because Native has got your back. Native cares about the products you put on your body and they're about stopping the stink the right way. That's the Native difference. You probably already know about Native's legendary aluminum-free deodorant, which I love. But have you tried their toothpaste? body wash, or mineral-based sunscreen? Yes, Native now has a broad-spectrum SPF 30 sunscreen for your face and body. It's lightweight, it absorbs quickly, and you can choose between unscented or coconut and pineapple. Native is on a mission to overhaul your entire hygiene routine by putting the care in self-care products that are made to work against odor. And they're made with simple ingredients that smell great. You can get their deodorant and body wash in amazing scents like coconut and vanilla, citrus and herbal musk, lavender and rose and more. You can even build your own personalized product bundles. Mix and match three of your favorite scents so you can have them on rotation so you have something for every occasion. So stay fresh, stay stay clean clean by going to nativedo.com slash hoot. That's nativedo.com slash hoot. Or you can just use our promo code hoot on their website at checkout. And that is to get 20% off your your first order. Once again, go to nativedeo.com slash hoot or use our promo code hoot at checkout for 20% off your first order with native. And now back to the episode. Deep dive into Wikipedia. You have a coffee company? Used to. Yeah. Used to have a coffee company. We used company. to have a coffee. I wouldn't call it a company. I had a line of coffee. A lo- okay. Either way. Yeah. I've always like coffee's always been something I've thoroughly enjoyed. So like back in OG YouTuber days, I'm like, well, what's a way to like start a business with mm. it? So I did a subscription service for a while um, of coffee. Are you still into coffee today? Oh yeah, I, I fresh beans, the whole for sure. French press. When I was in, yeah, <laughs> I know nothing about coffee <laughs> except just Mr. Mike. Coffee. Yeah, <laughs> you heard of him? We Starbucks. <laughs> Gift cards. Oh my god! <laughs> sure. That's what when people talk about, they're like Starbucks or Pete's Coffee or uh. oh God. But um, I no, there's just time and a place. We when we were in um for the book trailer, we, we went to a coffee roastery in Edinburgh uh, and got to like see all the beans they use and see their roastery process and it was fantastic. I, I've done how like, a coffee you, sipping. How did you get into coffee? I think it was just like a natural 
natural progression. Like my, I, once I got into college was when I started really getting into it. And then once I moved out to LA, I realized that there was so much more to coffee. Kind of like when you start drinking beer or wine or spirits in general, you just realize like there are layers to everything. Mm -hmm. And I just, so you did it yourself. You didn't have like a, a master Jedi, like training you in the ways of no a v60 or a chemex or aeropress and nope all, you learned it all yourself all youtube yeah, yeah yeah so yeah i do it all do it all myself and now, are you falling more are you falling more in love with like the process of making the coffee the flavor the of the coffee or how you feel after you have the coffee? all of the it. above all sir. of it when i i I'm trying to remember who i feel like it was something on one of your podcasts someone was saying they didn't get that why you liked making coffee so slowly. I'm like, that's the best part. Yeah, Ilya hates when I post on Instagram and I'm just like, hey, here's me doing this and doing that. And he's like, why would you spend more than 30 seconds making coffee? Because I it's agree, relaxing. but I like the hobby. I get the ritual. Uh, do you do you make yourself a fresh cup every day? Oh, yeah. I make a, a V60 every morning. V60? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is that like morning. better than a V8? Like vegetable juice? Like a V60? Can, can we cut his mic? <laughs> get him out what of here. What is a V60? Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. <laughs> um, no, I mean, there are different different methods to brew coffee. So you could do, like like you said, a French press. A V60 is just like a drip, a drip coffee, essentially. There's a lot of different ways that you can yeah. take. Basically, the simplest thing to describe it is coffee is water and beans filtered through a method. Okay. That method is either a V60, which is just a type of thing. There's an AeroPress. Yep. There's a French press. Aero press Even a Mr. Coffee is essentially the same thing. It's hot water. The coffee beans are grinded up and it drips through, but there's different processes. There's different ways. And, and the reason like a V60 is one that I like is because it is slower, but it also the fun, it's a funnel shape. Um, and the reason it's a funnel shape is that it, you know, the beans get, or the, the liquid, the coffee gets more concentrated as it goes through it versus like, um, if you would use like a Mr. Coffee, it's flat. So then it just kind of goes through like a thin layer of grounds versus a concentrated layer of grounds. Or if you use a French press, it's just soaking in the grounds. So there's no way to control how strong the coffee is. So there's a very specific. Aren't you French pressing? No, I, I French press my least favorite way of making coffee. Actually, I used to love it, but it's because it's quick. It's, it's your free, yeah. It's it's a good starter, but I I just love the Chemex. That's my method yes. these days. Chemex is great too, which is it's very similar to a V60. It's, Do you take coffee before you go on a run? Yes. Yes. You need to have a good. Pool. Do you run every day? You need to have a good pool. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, if you're having coffee like before you run, like are you ever well, on a run like, and then you gotta go poop? Or do I you... have a method. I'm a Virgo. Okay. I know what okay. I'm doing. So, so I, it's it's like all it's all timed out. Okay. I wake up, I have the coffee within like a X amount of minutes. Something happens, and then I'm like, you know, I can go anytime now. Oh, okay. I can go for this run anytime. I am ready to go. Good. And you run every day, most yeah. days. Every day. Well, six days a week. Did you run today? Yeah. How many miles did you run today? Eight. Eight <gasps> miles. Yeah, that's kind of that's the, that's the eight new, miles. That's the new minimum. What's your pace? Uh, for like a a run today was like seven, maybe like seven twenty, seven twenty five. My yeah, my marathon pace was like seven ten. You ran a marathon two. Yeah. <laughs> What are we doing? I want to run this. more though. I'm so I had like this whole last year. I've been so sad I couldn't run a marathon. <laughs> and you know what he listens to <laughs> when he runs? What? Nothing. I don't bring anything with me. Yeah, I know. You mentioned that before. You don't bring a phone, a wallet. You run I've, like naked, basically. Naked of technology. I've been arrested. <laughs> I, I, um, yeah, I find that it's like I, I get when people say they like to meditate. That's why, like, that's why I run with nothing. I think that's the only way that I could get in a meditative state is when I have no distractions besides my own mind. And you're, and if you're sitting in a room, you're you know your laptop's there, you know your phone's there, you might just pick it up. But I'll, yeah, I'm like I'm too. I like hear the fan moving over there. I'll yeah. see like a bird flying out there, or I'll like feel the temperature in the room, and I just can't. I meditated today. Did, Did you? you? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. How I've long? been doing it. All, uh, ooh, I would say like 12, 15 minutes. Oh, nice. Yeah. With an app or it's solo? Headspace. Mm. Headspace. I like it. Oh yeah, it's just so great. Just getting just to concentrate on your breath and like thoughts come and go, but it's just the key of like refusing to react to those thoughts yeah, yeah, yeah. it's letting them pass and recognizing oh i'm having a thought let me return to the breath and mm -hmm. then that's one rep and then you just do as many reps as yeah time allows it's just crazy it. how our brain just always wants to go into like i don't know monks call it like monkey chatter like mode it's just like yep. mm -hmm. chatter, 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 chatter. it's like stop stop and just getting that to like calm down you find such a good like peace out of it it's so very, can yeah. you take us through your morning routine because this it sounds like you have one yeah i like i'm an early riser i like to wake up uh 
early and because then no one's like bothering me like that if i could wake up at six i would love to i wake up more like seven and then to I, an alarm yeah usually um, what, what kind the of jet alarm lag, sound? the jet lag i have now i can wake up at like 6 45 with ease what's your alarm sound um it's one of the really chill ones some people don't realize that like the standard ones are you can change so yeah. it's like yes mine's the one that's it just, I think I have the same one. It's, it's like great. starts off. It blows really my quiet. mind that people wake up to eh, 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 eh. I like can't. who? Are you kidding me? I can't. I really. And then you have to go to it like live your life when you wake up to to an alarm. Literally an alarm. No way. Okay. I so could you've... probably like I could probably pick someone's alarm sound based upon their demeanor. You know what I mean? Where I'm like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I bet I could. I'm like, hmm, you got the eh, eh, one, don't you? Okay, so you wake up. To an I, alarm. Yeah, wake up to an alarm, um, and then I'll go immediately start, like, making the coffee, chug a bunch of water, um, and then I'll, like, s just, like, kind of, I don't know, clean up the room, usually, and then I'll sit down and just, like, listen to a podcast while I'm drinking coffee, have the windows open, and then, like, once eight rolls around, I'll start, like, doing emails and stuff, but it's, like, chill. I'd rather wake up an hour before I have to just so I can work myself into have a the leisurely day. morning mm -hmm. anytime i'm yeah even even if i've had like a rough night before i still always wake up and try to run or always wake up early just to like get the routine going. when do you go for the run um the run so after that probably like an hour hour and a half after coffee or so so you get some work done and yeah. then go for the run yeah I same can. route every time you switch it up no i switch it up do you yeah. play in the night before like what turns you're gonna take you just kind of freestyle and i have do the map in your i have head. like maybe like eight routes that i go on and i just kind of like alternate them um but yeah the ones like when i run like uh really really far i'm almost running to the ocean and back essentially wow yeah i've ran into you a few times running yeah, maybe was it once or twice yeah, there's a couple times yeah because yeah. i run yeah i run i run a route that you're on frequently and like is sometimes you'd be like connor yeah like i w was with patricia like right by her place yeah. and this is when like patricia and i first started dating and i knew you lived kind of in the neighborhood yeah and i was like oh Oh, you're just on a run? Cool. You must live so close. And then I like looked up. I asked you where your address was one day. And I'm like, okay, well, if he was there, then his place must be really close to it. And it's like way Miles away. deep on the other side of like West Hollywood. I was like, what the hell? Oh, my gosh. I could never even run that distance, let yeah. alone every day. I took a fast miles. pace, too. Wow. Yeah, you just get used to it like anything. I don't know. And I, and I always tell people this, too. Like, I'm... I'm nothing in my my family runs way faster. My brother was like an all-American. He was like one place away from being an all-American. So he can run um he can run a I he, I don't try to even think. He could run a marathon at like probably like 6 30, 620, 615 even pace. Oh, wow. He's fucking fast. So it's in the blood. He's crazy, yeah. My mom's run like 26, 28 marathons or something. Well, did yeah. they what? encourage that onto you at a young age like Actually, it's no. good to run or you just realize I I'll mean, run. probably a little bit of a push, but they definitely, they didn't, like, make me do anything. Yeah. Yeah. We're that family that, like, we run together on Christmas. You we run that, together that, on Thanksgiving. The meme that's, or, like, there's, like, a very famous Twitter that's, like, no matter what I do, I'll consider myself a success if I don't marry into a family that runs a 5K Thanksgiving morning. <laughs> Prepare to be unsuccessful in the Frannas. <laughs> do your uh, your siblings, significant other, others, do they run with them? Yeah. Um, well, most do. Um, but it's kind of that thing that you almost, I think you can't help but want to try when you're surrounded by uh -huh. somebody. But we never, like, force anybody to. So wait, but is that a real thing? <laughs> Christmas morning you guys go for runs? We look forward to it. Like, that's like you go on a family run Christmas morning. Well, not like... But it's not like a, this is our annual family run. It's like, I'm going on a run. Who wants to come with? And most of the time, most people want to go with. So we'll just go for a... And you bring nothing with you. Yeah. We all, the best is when you're running with other people, then you just talk, you gossip, you catch up. So, um, <laughs> did you catch that episode of uh, That's why I'm with my brother, though, because he's so fast. And I'm oh like, my gosh. So, and he's pushing a baby, too. And I'm like, how are you running this fast? Do you get any feet pain or anything from running? Any feet pain? Um, I get, man, I get like tendonitis and stuff you? in my foot, and I don't even like run. So I feel like if I ran, it would hurt even more. You get more. tendonitis just from standing? Yes, Connor. Oh, poor thing. I don't. Well, it's not like severe, but it just feels like he, I have this sharp thing. He's in got a my lot of foot. human to carry around. He's yeah. a big oh, guy. True, 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 true. No, it's a, it's a lot. That's why I couldn't do a backflip that easily. Come like you're yeah. saying, I have to put all of this over so my body and so back the on tendonitis. its feet. The tendonitis. I maybe I, I should start running i always feel like i'm i'm not that short but because i'm friends with people like you and will and you're both <laughs> above six foot how tall are you six three yeah I See, you're six will, four 
maybe I'm going on six four. I don't know. People who are six four tell me I'm six four. So. Bo Burnham's taller than you, so <laughs> he's six five. I looked it up. Uh, uh, but no, yeah. Since I'm, I feel tiny in comparison. But I'm average, so I'm just gonna throw that out. I there. wouldn't say you're short. I'm I not wouldn't. tall, and I'm not short. I am just in between, aren't I? Yeah, no, I I don't ever really think about your you. height. If like I was like, oh, Connor's coming over, and they like, oh, how tall is he? I wouldn't be like, <laughs> like I'm like five eight, five nine. Yeah, we're like the on same. The shoes. Yeah, I think we're the same we're about height. the same. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? See, in my head, I feel like you're shorter than Connor. Which, really? if you are, then maybe I'm taller than I think. Maybe this is like a dysmorphia thing. I don't Possibly. even know. Maybe I'm six foot and I just don't know it. You think t- Connor's taller than me? I don't think so. Can we do a check? Yeah, we can stand up right now. Let's do a check. Yeah, so we can right. stop. Let's anyway. see. And we might not even, you guys may be just completely off camera for this. So, uh, um, Sam Max back. I think this camera will catch it. Who's taller now? Shoot. All right. I'm, uh, it's really? Like I feel like, like we're like the same, we aren't the same we? height. Ooh, Connor's j- taller. Connor is taller by, ooh. Like half an inch. Whoa! Half an inch. See, I thought like, we were the same. It looks like we're, we're like the same eye height. Eye we're yeah. eye level. But your your hair could adds be the a little shoes bit too. Could be the shoes. Yeah, I have a little bit probably more shoes. Wow! Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. You heard it here first. So Connor. <laughs> yes, Reed. Sorry guys, we yeah. just took a pee break. That's why it just sounds like awkward. Yeah. For no, us. We're, we're back. We're back. That was hey, the hey, we're back. Oprah. Con- uh, Oprah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever photographed Oprah? No, mm-hmm. I wish. Who has been your top person? Well, I guess I don't even know if I wish that. That's not something I've ever wished. I'm lying. Yo, you don't. Well, even I mean, want... I would, but that's not something I've wished. I feel like Oprah would only like if she does does get her photos taken. It's only by like the same person. Yeah, I would love to be. I would love to talk to Oprah. Yes. I don't think. Yeah. Oh yeah, you are the There's... one who introduced me to like Oprah's Instagram account. You were like you have to follow this. It's. Do you know who the first Oprah's very first Instagram photo was with? No. Gary Vaynerchuk. No way. Yep. Really? Yep. That's his like that's like he flexes that sometimes. It's her <laughs> very first Instagram photo is her and Gary V. And it's like with my friends. And cause he claims that he's the person who convinced her back in like 2012 to get on Instagram. Oh, bro, gotta get on Instagram. <laughs> no. You're not if you're not gramming right now with me, I think you're done. <laughs> How, Instagram, when, what year was it? Like 2012 or 2013. Yeah, okay, or something. That, that makes sense. Like, yeah, to just post Oprah. a random. It's not a, that's kind of a flex for Gary Vee to be oh, like. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Is, your, are you a big fan of Oprah? I was just supposed to be like, what's your biggest flex? But <laughs> uh, um, having Connor Frant on Hoot and a Half. Huh? Yeah. Oh, shit. Thanks. Um, what about Oprah? What did you um, say? Oh, you introduced me yeah, to Oprah's Instagram account it's because fantastic. her garden is my favorite uh, post she makes because it's still have like. 11 huge eggplants and she's like bountiful feast today yeah she'll <laughs> in be like, the garden Rut- it's rutabaga season or something. like she'll just and then she'll have like a giant basket of just like carrots and she'll and she'll have like her friend like film a video of her but i love it because oprah you can tell is like a one-take wonder oh, yeah. like you think like the way she just effortlessly talks about what's going on in her yeah. garden yeah. like that would take me like three or four tries to really get it down what yeah. i'm saying <laughs> oprah is just she's been doing it for like 30 years yes yeah. just yeah doesn't stop doesn't stutter once no like, likes or ums or you know oh of course not no. yeah. she's a fantastic follow daily wholesome energy so follow oprah everybody yes 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 have you heard of her oh, but you so you haven't photographed oprah but you have photographed a lot of really great talent and um Famous people. Uh, who has been the the your favorite person you photographed? Favorite, uh, um, or one that you were actually genuinely nervous and worried like the photos would come out blurry because you were just shaking the camera too much. I don't. I don't really get like starstruck, but I do get nervous. Like when I'm in front of a musician, I'm afraid I'll start singing their songs. Have you ever done that? Yes. Well, that was like me and Maude Latour this past weekend. I was sure. hanging around her. I was like started mumbling her songs around her, and I'm like, I can't. Like... I don't know what it is, but yeah, even like so, I photograph Banks, and I love Banks. Banks's Banksy's music. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Banks. Um, That's who you were just talking about. Yeah, Banks. The the drummer. the drummer for Banks is a friend of mine, and he owns the coffee shop right underneath the Venice sign in Venice called Minotti's Coffee. There, it's. Have you been to Minotti's? No. Oh, it's really good. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. There's there's also in the store there's like a photo on the wall, like a framed photo. Yeah. Right by the the counter, and if you take the photo off and flip it around, there's a secret menu. Oh. <gasps> Probably oh, maybe, not so secret yeah, maybe, anymore. Maybe I should cut that out. But <laughs> you can just leap it. Yeah. And we'll say it. Um, yeah. yeah, Minotti's. In, it's literally right underneath the Venice sign. Uh, really? Unbelievable coffee. And the drummer from Banks is 
the owner. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. But when you photograph Banks, you didn't well, creep her out af- too much. I was more just afraid I was going to start singing her songs uh-huh. um, in front of her, which was really embarrassing. Uh, but no, that didn't happen. She was great. She was fantastic. I'm trying to think of anyone that I genuinely. It's always like right before someone is someone I should be like when I like I photographed Billie Eilish before she was had a 50 million Instagram yeah. followers. <laughs> so like I was just like, who's this cool girl who sings really well? I like her. And so that she was eating a can of beans on a couch <laughs> and I was taking pictures of her. Was that your idea? Did you pitch it to Billie? Like I'm picturing you with like a can of beans. <laughs> so she was that was in between takes. She was just like, mom, I'm hungry. And her mom's like, I brought you a can of red beans. And she just ate it with a spoon. Out of the can? Yeah. Cooked from I home. Don't know. What was, was the time was from like literally... when the beat was there? An oven in your studio to like cook them up? Was, I don't think it was cooked, if I remember right. But again, that all makes sense to me. Plastic spoon or a metal? Oh, I, I think it was a metal the... spoon because I think it was from the house that we were like in as like our base for the shoot. Whoa! Yeah, can of refried. Well, can of they're refried vegan, beans. a vegan family, so I think it makes yeah. sense that they had food ready to go because usually it, it's tough to find vegan stuff like <laughs> on a photo shoot, but. I don't think that was the reason. I think she just really liked beans, to be honest. Do you, and you published the photo of her eating the beans? No, no, that was in between. We, oh, okay. we had photos just of like her in Venice. Like there's a really good one of her in like a laundry mat. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah. So I had like no reason to be nervous. I was like, I just like your music. It was the day her EP came out, like the really the one that made oh, her. Like, yes, yes. And I was like, this is really good. <laughs> Same thing with like <laughs> Olivia Rodrigo. I photographed her before her music came out. Whoa! And I and she. I remember her saying things like, "Oh yeah, I'm working on some music," and I was like, "That's exciting." <laughs> Just little did you know, know they would be at the top of the charts genuinely. and we couldn't get out out of our heads right now genuinely i made her like run through her garden in like a suit I mean, she was in like a michael kors suit and she's just this you know like how suggestive <laughs> are you to them on their like uh i don't know how they're posing are you like, I, like deb from napoleon dynamite just like <laughs> just put your chin right here yeah, yeah, yeah. or are you like give me like a be like a tiger like yes yes, yes. no no it. no no uh I, I think it, it depends upon the person and whatever it is. A lot of the shoots I do are for uh, editorial. They're more for, like, fashion. Okay. Um, but a lot of the times it's more like I, I pull the person aside. I'm like, what do you what do you want to look like? What are you trying to give off? Are you trying to be sexy? Are you trying to just have fun? Are you trying to be silly? What Like, what do you want me to photograph? And then we'll go from there. Yeah. But, yeah, I've gotten better at giving direction. It's not, like, in my nature to boss people around but you kind of have to because they don't know what they look like on camera if especially if they're not like a model yeah. so you kind of have to help them which is which is hard so like don't don't do that when you, when <laughs> you don't, like, don't do that it doesn't look good no, no, no. No. when you like when you it's define hard. yourself is there a specific expression that you define yourself through like do you say I'm a YouTuber or I'm a photographer or I'm a writer or I'm an artist. Like, is there, how do you define yourself? I'm a humanitarian. I never, I never know. It's, it's a tough one. I absolutely load the word influencer to my core. Influencer. I load that. Okay. And I don't even really like the word creator. I don't mind creator cause it's vague enough, but I don't like influencer because that makes it sound like my job is to influence and I don't put things out to influence. Like I, I mean, I guess I'm influential, but same thing with a YouTuber. I'm like, I like I that's I do that, but I'm not just that. So I never know. I wish there was a universal word for it. Artist. You could say that, but that just sounds pretentious. A little pretentious. Uh, yeah. It? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. It's like what everything I do is is in the the arts. But yeah, artist feels. You pretentious. make and take things and write things and share them. Yeah. Like, yeah. But you wake up feeling like I'm are you a, a publicist? <laughs> no, it's just but I'm like that. But you, like, you, but you don't wake up and you're like I'm a photographer, but like I'm gonna write today. Or, like, I'm a YouTuber, but I'm going to take photographs today. I think the reason I like doing, I like being in, um, multifaceted is because I, I, whatever I'm feeling in that day, I can do something, I can accomplish something with it. So, if I do have a photo shoot, it's like my day that my, my goal is to be a photographer that day. If I wake up and I think I'm just feeling down in the dumps, it's like, I'll write about it. I'm a writer today. Uh, and no matter what, I can always lean back on too. It's like, if I really, want to like fall into the companies i've started it's like then i'm a ceo today and i can just like go to the company meetings so are you still running herdwell yeah that's really cool yeah it's great it's I wanna fantastic get, i want to get involved in that it's I, yeah well, you want to do a playlist you want to yes i would love to make a playlist with her i didn't realize that you started herdwell you didn't 
Oh, you founded it. Yeah. And Most explain what Herdwell is. Herdwell is the first record label uh, powered completely by social media influencers. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, You it's just like, use the word influencers. I know. Just, well, it's, it's, in your own genuine, business. A lot of them are influencers. But <laughs> so it's essentially, I had the idea um, around like six years ago that I really wanted to find a way to work mm. in music, but in a way that was something that, because I'm not a musician myself. So I thought there's nothing better than sending my friends music that I like that no one else is listening to, stuff that isn't top 40. There's like that really good feeling of finding and discovering an artist. So we started making these playlists with just me and um, two business associates. And then we're like, this could be a whole thing. We could start essentially licensing music and then people with platforms start bringing these smaller artists up and giving them a spotlight with their platforms and everyone wins. So we've been doing that for six years. See, and I, I love that. Yeah. Because, like, I love doing that with just hunting down musicians and, like, going through the depths and trying to net, like, who, what's a sound I haven't heard and yeah. who is this person and they don't have a following and just the giving best. them just a glimpse of attention and getting those listens. There's some there's something really beautiful in that. Yeah. And that's awesome. You've kind of, like, realized that and have created a huge network for it. Yeah. I mean, like, we were in the beginning um, stages. And by no means, like, did we actually have, I guess, I mean, I can't, like, take credit for anyone. But, like, we were in, like, Billy was on one of my first playlists. Lainey was on one of my first playlists. Odessa was on one of my first playlists. Um, who else? Like, the, truly, so, like, Grimes was on one of my first playlists. So mm-hmm. it's one of those things where you... I guess it's cool that like I believed in them in there. I was right. <laughs> yeah. I was like, they were really good. Look so, at them. It's almost like you wish there was a stock market for musicians, even though that would be terrible. Would've... You like, gosh, I called that when that came out. Yeah. Like when no Royals by when Royals by Lord came out, I was like, it probably had only like three less than ten thousand listens, I'm sure. When you listened to it? Yeah. You were that early? Oh, I was very early on it and I was like sending it to all my friends and then it was everywhere. So what do you think about solar power? Oh, well, I haven't heard it, but... But what do you, what do you thought? She looks good. Legs. And <laughs> legs and ass. Cheeks. She got them cheeks. Yeah, it's a wild press photo. It was... Fan- I saw it on my timeline, and I was like, who's this Who's this really interesting artwork? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a photo from that angle before of anybody. <laughs> That's a wild angle. Oh, it was great. I thought I, it was... It's great. She's awesome. Yeah. I love... I can't... The, do you think that will just be the name of, like, her single that she's putting out? It's not the album, right? I imagine it's the lead single, just, like, Green Light and just, like, um, mm-hmm. Royals. And then I imagine very quickly after uh, an album will follow. But do you think that will be the album cover? No. I think that that... Because the single cover for Royals and the single cover for Green Light were completely different from the actual album covers. There was a single cover for Green Light? Yeah. It, it was one that what I didn't really like that much, to be honest. Is she like wearing like a pink top? No, in it was it? kind of graphic design. Oh, it was okay. a little bit more like. I gotta I look back at that. It's yeah, the actual music video and visuals are much better. I wish it was just like a still from the music video. Do you think she's gonna release it on June twenty sixth? Was it that or twenty first? I heard I heard the twenty something. Solstice, the summer solstice. Oh, twenty first. It's, it's the twenty first. Oh, it's okay. the twenty first, and ev- that's what everyone is convinced is the twenty first. You're I, right. Do you ever hate that you know so much about something, and you're like, "How am I like keeping in this information?" Oh, I, I follow subreddits, yeah. man, and like I, I check it like every day, and Dude. I like talking with like all the Lord stands. It's good to nerd out about something. I firmly believe it's like gives you something to be excited about every day. Oh, yeah. um, I if she releases music, and then Rihanna releases releases music, and then Adele releases music, I will be the happiest person in the world. All three. Rihanna hasn't put out anything in six, seven. We know years? it's it's been a while. We since... the fan base know, <laughs> and it's fine because we yeah. love her and we appreciate her and she can take her time. But also, please, I'm, I'm craving it. I know I have please. to like. Have you ever tried to them. pick up an instrument, learn music, take a stab at that? I want. I really. I would love to learn something, but I've never. You never. I, I haven't picked I just, up a guitar, sat down on a drum set. If you did, I what what instrument would it be? I feel isn't keys the most universal? Like you could learn keys and then you could learn guitar easier. So I feel like I would learn keys first and then move on. Yeah, I'd love to like work on music in some capacity. I like writing, so I feel like I could write for music in some capacity. But I don't know, it's always like fun. And then Mike will start doing something on like GarageBand, showing me all the other things you do with music, and I'm like, that makes no sense to me. Really? And then I then I get like off put by it. Like, on like under- a little bit of delay, a reverb, reverse. Yeah, something. Yeah. They open up all these different little dashboards <laughs> on like GarageBand. And I'm EQ. like, oh, I can't. I want to watch you do that then, because I I mean like I edit all my own stuff for everything else. So like I feel like it's in me to learn how to yeah, use. I think that. you could. That's why I think you could take to it pretty easily especially mm-hmm. you even you know you don't even need to play an instrument you can just 
open up GarageBand and yeah. figure out how to make really I've cool tried. sounds. B- by a you have tried. It's scary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you'll, there's there's like I think a threshold that once you pass, you're like, okay, uh, I I, I don't, I'm not going to be Mozart, but yeah, it's better than not doing it. It's fu- I mean like because for all my YouTube videos, I do. Um, I, I, would, I guess I'd call it sound design because I'm always downloading interesting sounds to use in my videos. So like I, my favorite thing right now is to download old sounds from 90s shows and put them into my videos in ways that like people don't necessarily notice. How so? Like what type of sound? So like if someone would normally like either pop a graphic on the screen or if you have a transition, they would normally just use like a or a. But I use like a Powerpuff Girls motion sound instead. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> I like that. It's fun. It's I'm always like I'm remind, remind reminding myself of like nostalgic sounds that would be in like have the same effect. Subconscious nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then wow. I'll literally go rip it from somewhere and like put it really low in the background. And... You did those effects really good too, though. Thanks. <laughs> what are the other ones I know? <laughs> I know like the no. Um, I always know like the iPhone sounds. What is it? No, I can't remember it. Does Twitter still have that sh- yeah. sound? Like yep, when yep. you like are at the top and like you refresh it? Sh- yeah. Whoa. Oh, I always was so jealous of people that did that. Why are you oh. hitting your head? Because it like. Whoa. Uh, uh, Whoa. Yeah, yeah, that's like the. Re- <laughs> oh, I can't. Yeah. The, the <laughs> ASMR podcast? Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hold, it, hold this. Hello, everyone. Hold welcome. It. Can you do that? Matt, no. Oh, no, no. Oh, you really? are talented. Can you do it? I love you. There, there are people who can like play songs like that. Like you can get different notes out of it if you really? lift up different fingers. No way. Uh, oh no! I, I, I mean, can't I heard it, the but... key change there. <laughs> do bird sounds. This is see. This is start a whole channel on this. That's incredible. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, you didn't know that. That's great. That's a really oh. good bird sound. Thanks, Mike. Oh yeah. Do you put on sunscreen every day? No. Oh really? You I, should. This is. I know this is completely unscientific, and it makes absolutely no sense. But yeah. Uh, our friend Will. He he we he sent me a photo from my pool party. It was mm-hmm. thank you both for coming by the way. Um, he sent me a photo of like his tan line, but it was like a burn line. And I sent him one of mine and he was like, damn, you get tan and I just burn. And I said, it's all mental. <laughs> like you, you, can, you can just decide. You control when to you tan. Can, like when I'm out in the sun, I'm just like, I'm not going to burn. This is going to be a tan. And I just, I, it's a mental game. I of- mean, I mean this in the nicest <laughs> possible way. You're batshit crazy. <laughs> yes. I don't know. The, the brain has some incredible powers and on your skin, like, what I believe, I, I believe in the simulation theory, and I don't believe in that. No, no way, Mike. Getting right. tan is a mental game. No, I'm it's telling just you, genetics. No. Mm. no, you just have tan. Genetics. I used to get burned, and now I get tan. Getting tan is, is a men- mental game. Getting tan is a mental game, and yep. love is a losing game. Well, if that's if you, <laughs> if you believe it to be so. Is that a crazy theory? Yes. If you believe that love is a losing no, game. No, no. If you believe that it, getting tan is a mental game. It is insane. That's, that's insane. We can conduct that experiment. Yeah. Like tomorrow, I'm conducting it right now. I'm and... tanner than my brother, who's usually way darker than I am. To be fair. Because your I brother get... has been in New York City this entire time. I know, but he I... He hasn't been enjoying like the sun by the pool right, like that's, you that's do That's a little seat day. of my Where craziness. Where are the results? What should we it... title this episode? Um, hmm. Meet Matt's boyfriend. Smiley face. <laughs> oh. Not, no, no. I oh, give you permission. Patricia one. Oh, yeah, it was, was a like, it was a reference to the last one. That would be, that would be pretty good. <laughs> Meet Matt's boyfriend. Yeah, sure. A lot of times though, we would go out to dinner with uh, just Connor and uh, Arden, and Will and Arden. Or and wait, we, no. I, yeah. I'm always we'd the go third to dinner wheel. with Will and Arden, who are in a couple, and it would just be me and him though. And people, I always feel like I'm like people think we're probably dating right now if they walked we in were. and saw us together. <laughs> I don't a, know why, a, honey, honey. It was a, no, <laughs> tell the people, sweetie. It's it was sweetie. just a bromance. <laughs> oh my the god, I hate, I hate the word bromance. I hate. Oh god, you do. I hate all of those words because I feel like it's just making it's. Oh, it's kind of like just softening up like homophobia in a way. Essentially, it's just yeah. like oh yeah, you know, it's just we're a not bromance. gay. We're not gay. It's just a bromance. Yeah, it's putting a word to something that doesn't need a word. It's just a friendship. Like, why are you making it sound like it's weird for two men to be friends? 
I just hmm. think it's a strange. I think you, it's a strange. That's a, good, that's a great call. You're completely right. And what just messes with all of us is just like elementary school and middle school fear, and that just like stays with you through the rest of your life. Yeah. And you always feel like you're that like is going to be one of those words in like ten years where we're like bromance. Like you're going to see it in like a Paul Rudd movie, and you're going to be like, oh. Well, what? you don't say it for two girls that are friends. You don't say. Girl, girl what, they gal say, man? Yeah. Girl well, they say my girl. They just say my girlfriend. Yeah. Why couldn't you say my boyfriend? Oh, yeah. That's uh-huh. what I meant. We're, he's my boy and he's my friend. That's what I meant. So, what do you he's think my boyfriend. I, I blame. <laughs> just, this is my boyfriend. <laughs> being messed up in middle school. Is this autographed? Did you sign this one? I don't think so. Can you? Oh, I definitely need well, to get a signature cost before you $10. leave. Oh, really? Oh. Okay. So, bop, bop, bop. Connor, you have incredible art direction in everything you put out from your books to your YouTube videos. Um, all the fonts and design, Thank unbelievable. What fun. is your least favorite font? Well, I mean, like the obvious answer is Comic Sans, but you don't uh, like Comic, Comic Sans. Comic Sans is kind of coming back, though. I kind of fuck with Comic Sans. No, you know what the new Comic Sans is, Connor? Hmm. Lobster. I, I yes, it was really funny when I was doing the book design for my cover one. We made a joke about lobster. Be like, it looks a little too lobster font. Yes, so, yeah. Lobster no. is just this new font everyone's using everywhere because they think it looks like hip in indie. Yeah, and it's just very identifiable. Mm. And I'll once put, you see it, that... you cannot unsee it. Is it's... it like the Cooper font, like the Tablet Creator font that he uses a lot? Cooper's kind of classic. Cooper's it... kind of cool. Um I'll show you. I'll... Yeah, it's one of those that like it has a little bit of like curl to it and extended letters and whatever, but yeah, it's there are lobster. cool versions of there are cool like people who have done takes. Are on there it. logos of people who use lobster? Like is that is that a brand like Helvetica every news is Helvetica is yeah, lobster in does. brands yet? Oh God! Let me see it again. Yeah, yeah it's horrible. Lobster. But yeah, it's that like extra bit it's, on the capital It's the live, letters. laugh, love font. It's horrible. Yeah. Um, that's not the live, laugh, love font. It's like, font. but like that's similar. Could, I know what you mean. It could be in Target. Is it a Chugi font? Uh, oh, sure. someone's up to date. <laughs> sure, I guess you could say it's like Chugi esque, but like Chugi, you'll know it when you see if something's Chugi. Mm-hmm. You know. In closing. In closing. In closing. In conclusion. Um. So we have house fires to look forward to. Anything else that you want to plug or no? Um, no. But we'll have love. the link. Wait, wait, oh. Plugging love. Love. Wow, that's a great plug. Yeah. Spread it. Do you want to sign? Have it. Experience would you want to it. sign a copy of Note to Self? Not house fires, which I do want to get a copy of. Or actually, I should just buy it. I, I, yeah, or I can once they send me. Look like, at our certificate. They send of me like a thousand. That's a fun thing about. Um, oh, they send you a bunch of copies. Yeah, when I mean, like, I always forget when you do things with big companies, they have you know crazy budgets for things like that. But yeah, they just like send me boxes. And they're like, wow. yeah, just give them to people. No heart. I'll tell you, that's you a tell, good thing. Yeah, yeah, you can tell he's done that a few times. That's not his first rodeo. <laughs> Thank I you did, so much. I had to Connor. do it thirty-five thousand times for the last one. Thirty-five thousand. So the way you sign books, you can totally cut this out if you want. But the way you sign books is they send you pages from the book. And then you sign the pages, and, and then, then you put them into the book. And you sign thirty-five thousand. Thirty-five thousand for it, note to sell. There's no. That's is that the real number? It, I believe, if not more. Thirty-five thousand. If not more. Is your wrist sore from? How I, long does that take you? It took forever. It was genuinely just like focusing for that long, and also doing it in a timely fashion was like. So I would. I. I. It was a stack of papers. And I would sign, and my friend, assistant at the time, Courtney, would pull. So yeah. I would just sign. So you don't have pull, to, yeah. Sign and pull. And Did we you had listen it. to something while you were doing it? We listened to podcasts, but you also are so focused on doing the signature every time and not, like, really messing it up that it's, like, this perfect art. <laughs> so one of us would mess up, and we'd be like, uh. Uh, like you just like don't know. Yeah. You're like I don't, uh, and then we'd have to like recal- recalibrate, uh, wow. snap out of it. Yeah. It Are was... you gonna be doing signed copies of the new book? Yeah. 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 Wow. Are we on tour? Yep. Or well, maybe. Wait, it's it's one of those things where like wait we'll, to see what happens. We want to, but yeah. We'll stay tuned. I'm so excited for you. Oh, I'm so thanks. happy for you. Thanks. I love you, buddy. You are so talented thanks, in everything buddy. you do. Thanks for having me. And it's me, an guys. honor knowing you and being a friend. Um, and thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. That's Connor Franta, everybody.